Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be interviewing an underrated icon amongst icons, and I'm talking about Lee Bryant. You may remember her, she was the U-Band coffee girl in the late 70s. Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home. And then she spoofed it as Mrs. Hammond in Airplane 1 and Airplane 2, the sequel. You know, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. And she keeps getting slapped in the face over and over again by everybody on the plane. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, interviewing her, talking about this very... Um, interesting and amazing career she had um, in the 70s and 80s as an actress, and I'm pretty excited about it. I was, I'm excited that I was able to find her on Facebook and uh, talk to her about it and stuff. And um, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool, pretty cool. So um, yeah, here is my interview with Lee Bryant. Hi, Lee. Is it Tommy? Yes, it sure is. Hi, how are you? I am great. Welcome to the show. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah, it's such an honor, and I thank you for taking the time this morning. Sure, sure, glad I can. Great. So, how did acting begin for you? Did you know as a child you wanted to be an actress? Oh, sure. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, you know, the second flower from the left and the Easter play or something, I, I always, always thought it would be just a great idea. Nice. Were there any actors you were influenced by? Um, yeah, my, um, actually, Julie Harris mm-hmm. was a dear friend of, uh, her family were friends of my family's and her, she was a, my my aunt's best friend when they were growing up, so it was, you know, I always kind of had her in my life as a, as someone to look up to, and, and so when I decided growing up in Rose Point, Michigan, that I wanted to be an actor, my parents weren't, you know, <laughs> they weren't <laughs> through, but <laughs> they were, they at least said, oh, gee, okay, well, you know, you can give it a try. <laughs> they knew someone who had actually, you know, not ended up becoming a prostitute and actually had a successful career. So, you know, they 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 cooled down about it. Oh, that's good. That that's good. Did so? Where did you train? Um, I was a theater major in college. I was at um, both Endicott College and. In Massachusetts, and then at Pauline uh, State University for a while, and then I trained with the teachers in New York and Los Angeles. Mhm. Nice. What year did you move to uh, Los Angeles? I moved to Los Angeles in oh gosh, seventy four, I think, about. Mhm. Seventy three, maybe seventy three. <laughs> Yeah, the old. Di- and then I was there. I was there until about eighty-one. Nice. Yeah, those are the old days of of Hollywood when it was such a small community. Yeah. Yeah, and then I went back and forth, of course, for years and years and worked. So. Wow. After I moved back to New York. Mm-hmm. Your first uh, TV job was on The Rookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did so long ago, I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess it probably was, yeah. Yeah, um, you, were, you were on a lot of um, series for uh, Aaron Spelling, like Charlie's Angels and Starsky and Hutch and um, T.J. Hooker. Yeah. Were you close to him? Yeah. To, to Aaron Spelling? Yeah. No, I wasn't. I mean, I, I, I knew him, and, you know, he knew me as an actor and kept 
hiring me, which was nice. But um, I, did, I didn't have a particular friendship for it. He just, you know, it was just a very professional, you know. Nice. Professional relationship. That's good. You played a, a newscaster on it, and I, I can't believe, oh uh, my God, the, the guest cast of uh, this episode. You guys had, like, Harold Gould, uh, Ann Bloom, D.D. Kahn, Martin Cove. I mean, that's a powerhouse guest cast. Yeah, it's funny, and they were, and they were all friends of mine, which is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, we had a lot of fun doing it. We're kind of starting out in L.A., and, and uh, Martin Cove and I had just done uh, a streetcar named Desire at the Meadowbrook Theater in Michigan together. And I played Stella, and he played Stanley. And <laughs> so it was, it was fun. It's always fun to work with people you've worked with before. Mm-hmm. And then um, your first movie was Capricorn One. Kind of like an, that was just terrific. <laughs> it's kind of like an all-star. Exciting, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like an all-star disaster yeah. flick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was a it was a very exciting movie to do because the subject matter was fun and and uh, I know that Peter, the our director, had said that they. He had had the script for a while, and all the studios kept saying, no, 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 we don't want to do this because you're casting aspersions on, you know, mom and apple pie by saying that NASA or the United States government could ever be involved in any kind of a cover-up. <laughs> <laughs> and then along came Watergate, and all of a sudden, they were buying his script. So. Wow. Yeah, uh... It's a, a great cast, uh, Telly Savalas, uh, Elliot Gould, James Brolin, O.J. Simpson, Brenda Vaccaro, Sam Waterston, Karen Black, Hal Holbrook. I mean, was was that intimidating a little bit? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and I, had, I actually replaced someone there, someone else had been cast in the role that I was in, and I was in the Series or something, so they had to leave. Had to leave the film before they started shooting, and so I got called in, and I felt very, very grateful that I was able to do it. It was great fun, and I had been cast in a commercial, um, and had to back out of the commercial, and that was, you know, troubling because <laughs> the director of that commercial was really angry, and I. I thought I could give him the names of about 12 girls who could have played the same part. So, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be hard. <laughs> I, can give you, I can give you the names of people who wear the same size clothes as I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Pete... Yeah, Peter Peter Himes wrote and directed the movie. He gets such a bad rap because he likes to shoot on you know uh, sound stages and use artificial lighting. But I have a feeling that one day when he passes, um, film historians are going to consider him a pioneer. I'd rather agree with you. I think you know he he, he made a, a a beautiful film out of that one. But, and, not, and, and other things he did as well. But, I mean, that one particularly had to be on the sound stage because they were faking the Mars landing, you know, but it was, um, it was, it was very impressive. I remember walking onto that set the first time, on, you know, at CBS. It was pretty, pretty astonishing. Mm-hmm. And then um, you did an episode of The Incredible Hulk. What was that experience like? Yeah, his mother was actually a good friend of my great aunt's. Um, my great aunt's. Really? Yeah, she um, ran the kitchen 
at, uh, I believe it was the Hilton in San Francisco in those days. And, um, God, she knew everybody in, in show business that came through and stuff. And, uh, she knew him, she knew, uh, her mother and stuff. And it was pretty amazing. She actually grew up with Lana Turner. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. So you're in Los Angeles? Uh, uh, I'm right now I'm in Redding, California, but I'm originally from San Francisco. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What did uh, was Lou Ferrigno pretty intimidating? I also noticed uh, Meshack Taylor was in that episode. Oh, right. Gosh, yeah. That's good. And we lost him a few years ago. He was a good actor. Yeah. Yeah, he was a lovely actor. Very, very sweet. Also a lovely guy. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Coster was in that episode. Yeah, he's one of the quintessential 70s character actors in TV and film. Yeah, yeah, he worked all the time. It's great. So how did you get to be the spokeslady for You Ban Coffee? Oh, God, you really do. How did you find out about all this stuff? That's very funny. You really did your own work. I didn't go, oh, no, I forget all this stuff. I have to... Look at, you know, I, I kind of look myself up every once in a while and remember what I did. It's an inside job. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you, yeah, you know, I, I did a lot of coffee. It's funny. I, you know, I kind of did, you know, so I went to the room with Rim and I did Ruben and I did Rick and I did a lot of, I was a big Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of, of these commercials uh, when I first saw Airplane. My dad had to tell me um, about them because, you know, I wasn't born yet when they were on. And it, it's funny, for years, I thought, you know, the whole reference to it in Airplane was, um, I, I, I didn't know that it was a reference to those commercials. I thought maybe it, she was trying to uh, insinuate that um, that her husband was cheating on her, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very funny because I went, um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think they knew that I had done that commercial, one of those commercials when I went into audition. So I never told them. <laughs> but I, I don't know if they, I think they say they finally figured it out, but I didn't want to not get it because I had because I had actually done one of them, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was... Did you... So did, it, was, uh, it, was, it was funny. So you got the role in Airplane because of the commercials? Um, I don't think because of the commercials. I think just because I, they, they liked the way I read. But um, I, I think the commercials probably, you know, if, if they even knew about them, they didn't hurt ultimately. So... 
that you were you're the perfect choice for the role because you got that expressive animated face and you look like a wholesome upper class conservative housewife and you're just hilarious the way you play it. Are you just astounded at how um, iconic that movie has become? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I, we, you know, we had, uh, I got to see a whole bunch of uh, the people last year. Because they, mm -hmm. they did a screening to, um, in Los Angeles for, uh, oh, it was, you know, some, to raise money for some something. And they, and so they were a, a Bob and a whole lot of us actually went back for this, and they and they had a big panel discussion on this, and it was and it was such fun to see everybody. We kind of keep running into each other from time to time because there are you know they'll shoot another documentary about about airplane, or they'll do I know there seems to be something every few years that you know they come back out and it's another 50 year reunion. <laughs> <laughs> We, we have gotten to see each other a bit. Yeah. I, I met Robert Hayes a couple of years ago at a convention. Very nice man. Um, I wanted to ask him a lot of questions about his career, but he kept asking me uh, questions because I was I was walking with a cane because I was recovering from a car accident, and he was just so he was just so down to earth and so nice. Yeah, I don't think the movie was expected to do as well as it did because a couple of years before, Paramount um, did a, um, um, a parody, another parody of disaster movies called The Big Bus. And that movie, uh, like, nobody remembers that one. But <clears throat> there's no denying the genius of Jim Abrams and the Zucker Brothers. There's, there's nothing too far in that movie because nothing offends me, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Kind of the shit hitting the fan. That was the only thing. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, maybe not. <laughs> Other than that, it was, all, it was all pretty wonderful. Yeah, do people come up to you and try to slap you in the face? Yeah. You know, it seems to be the you know, it seems to suddenly come out I mean all the college kids will still know about it. So, you know, they they you know, they get together and watch it and it's very funny. My my children are now my youngest are now thirty and thirty two or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm 35. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the second one, you got slapped by Raymond Burr, and <laughs> that, <I did. laughs> that, that whole courtroom scene just kills me every time I see it. And yeah. I, I like the second one just as much as the first. Um, wh what was Ken Finkelman like to I work with? Guys, it's pretty much mine. All the humor that could be gotten from, 
from that situation, I think. And there, there were some, there were some very clever things in the in the second one, but it ultimately just didn't have the same the same surprise that the first one did. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of jokes recycled from the first one, but there's also some really clever stuff in the second one that's that's pretty original. Yeah, yeah, the Rocky 12 poster, or whatever it was, whatever number it was, was I thought very funny. There were some very good things. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Th- then you did uh, Death Mask. I actually interviewed Barbara Bingham yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, she's in Australia, and she's very nice and very loud, I have to say. <laughs> Is she? <laughs> yeah. Very loud. I don't remember her being loud. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was because uh, she was on a, a phone, you know, on, on, on the other side of the country. <laughs> Was she good to work with? Yeah, yeah, she was lovely. Yeah, Farley Granger. I think of pretty much, oh, Farley was great. Yeah, we, we did a soap together for a long time, too, so um, we were both on as the world turns. Yeah, I mean, he was a, a Hitchcock legend. Yes, yes, he was. And he was. He was a very, you know, a very nice, very elegant guy. And Danny Aiello's in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I also love, yeah. I, I think I've, had, I've been so fortunate because I've really been able to work with some pretty remarkable people. And, and I've always had very, very good experiences. Uh, at least, uh, I've, I've, you know, I've always come away being being just so full of respect for what they all do, and I'm so very lucky. Mm-hmm. I know you've worked with so many greats, and including you got to work with uh, Lucille Ball's daughter. Yes, Lucy Arnaz. She, uh, she is a pistol. She is just so fabulous. She's just so fabulous. She's just so Yeah, what, what, why do you think that show uh, didn't last? I don't know. I don't know if it was where we were positioned. I thought it was a very cute show. It was a, it was, um, it was funny and it was, it was, you know, well directed and well produced, and we had a, you know, it was a nice cast. And um, I don't know. It was just, you know, sometimes people, but sometimes there are. You know, things hit and sometimes they don't. And sometimes I, I think we, I can't wait to remember exactly when we played, but I think we were opposite some, you know, some big, big hot show at the time and we just couldn't get the numbers. Uh, and her mother, she tried to do one more show around that time and she was in her 70s doing Pratt Falls and stuff, which is pretty amazing. Did did, her, did she uh, visit the set? She, uh, I don't think she did. I don't remember her Lucy coming. Lucy, we always called her um, coming to the set. And and Lucy Arnaz was pregnant at the time, so we spent a lot of time kind of positioning chairs or me in front of her. I was short enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then you did, you did uh, an episode of the reboot of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Yes, yeah, yeah, again with a wonderful cast. So that was, that was really a good time. I, I loved doing that. With Burt Young and uh, Ronnie Cox and Doug Savant. And that's, Ronnie Cox, yeah. That's a good cast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what was uh, Alienation like? Oh, I loved that. <laughs> I got to play a really evil person, which is which I didn't 
get to do that much of. And I, I'm sure it was, it was, it was great. And, I, and the, you know, the, the production values I thought were just terrific, and all the actors were very talented, and the, the makeup, like, you know, just knocked me out. It was, you know, they were great. It was really interesting. I love science fiction, and I love, um, mm-hmm. so I, I was really glad to be part of that. Me too. I love science fiction. This show started out, uh, I, I started out interviewing just horror and science fiction people, and then I expanded it um, as time went on and stuff. I, I love the genre a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably my favorite. Though. <laughs> I love science fiction. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.